bosco de la de bosco de la caca thank you jesus thank you shaker de thank you amen with the lord good uh, good morning family good morning good morning sister and good morning yeah you are welcome in Jesus name thank you pastor light thank you for the opportunity good morning beloved god yeah welcome god bless you okay let's go to before we start the prayer we're going to share little exhortation talk about how to look into the book of Matthew 14 talk uh, we'll talk about the the feed of the multitude. I will paraphrase it to see where Jesus uh, 14 is read from 13 to 20, 21. Talk about Jesus feeding the multitude with five loaves and two fishes. First of all, Jesus had compassion. He said, the Bible says he saw them uh, like, like an offense because they were hungry for so they are hungry for food, hungry for the word of God, rushing after him, looking for him to learn. So he had compassion on them. And we are at the in the wilderness. Recording. The we are in the wilderness, close to the mouth. And a time called the the the, the, the apostles say. Master, let let these people go. Let them go so that they can go and eat the physical food. And Jesus said, no, feed them. Feed them. And Philip said, how much bread can we buy to feed these people? Can you see how many? There are many. We can't feed these people. But tonight, I want to talk about this money. And Andrew was able to find a lad with two fishes and five bread. And he introduced it to Jesus. So what am I talking this morning? I'm talking about the lad. That little boy, that boy with food, uh, five loaves of bread and if two fishes and was able to identify him. Not only identify him, identify him, announcing him. Maybe that boy would have been with that five loaves of fishes and two, uh, uh, two uh, five loaves of bread and two fishes there. And at the end of the day, when we tap in, so most of us, for a month ago, we all have gone to the mountain. We have felt spiritually at the end, at the end, everybody have felt. And some of us have five loaves of bread. Some of us have with two fishes. And there we are. There we are in our community. There we are in our state, full loaded, loaded, loaded. Because even if everybody is hungry there, that boy can never be hungry. That boy can never be hungry. But thank God Somebody at the, the somebody announced that boy 
today we talk about the lad, the boy with two two, uh, two fishes and five loads of bread. Two fish. But he, that boy would have been there until the end, and they dismiss them. They go, and today nobody will identify until this boy was announced. We thank God that somebody come and announce this boy to Jesus that there is a lad. Sometimes we feel with anointing, with all anointing, feel overflow, but nobody to announce you. Even Jesus are the son of, of son of God. Until John announced him, he was not known by any man. Nobody knows him. He was passing many people. All the people that are running after him, he was passing, they passed him and go because he was not announced. But that day, and they said, there is a boy here. And when this boy was announced and the bread, his bread was used to feed the multitude, how many baskets we made? Twelve baskets, extra, extra, more anointing, more overflow, overflow, until we announce. So this morning, I want us to cry and call God. Yes, some of us in the community, in environment where we are filled, we are now have been filled, our bottles have filled, waiting to explode, but nobody to announce us. We are nobody to announce you, nobody to announce you, because you have not been seen. Uh, people, people hunger. People are hungry around you. People are around you are hungry. They have been seeing you passing, but because you have not been announced, nobody has identified you. Nobody has seen the oil on your head. Nobody has seen that fire. Nobody has seen that you can heal. Nobody has seen that you can deliver. Nobody has seen that there is power overflowing in you. That boy was there with five lords and two fishes, but not all announced or identified. Until when he was announced, then Everybody, today we talk about this boy because he was announced. He was announced to the master and his bread was so used for the miracle. So this morning, brethren, before the man of God will come up to, 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 to minister, I want you to begin to ask God, Father, announce me. Raise my announcer. Rise my answer. Wherever that man, that way that you were used to announce me at this morning, Father, announce me so that God, the oil in my life will be identified, will be used, will be used. The people will begin to notice, notice that I'm there, notice the oil in my life. Jesus, John announced Jesus. He said, This is the lamp of God that take away the sins of men. I have not announced said, this is my beloved son. Hear him. And then this boy was, I said, there is the lad here that carried, oh, oh, yeah, that carried life, that carried him to feed him. Brother, begin to cry this morning. Begin to ask God this morning. Say, Lord, announce me. Lord, announce me. I want to be announced so that the world will see what you have planted in me. I know I will see so that the world will use what you have put in me. There is something God does in that God has put. You need to be announced, brother. Until that boy was announced today. We cannot talk about it. Marie get the boss in the gada gal. Zagada on rough gada was in the get the boss in the matter of walking the get together. Father God, thank you, Jesus. Marie get the bread on mute yourself and begin to pray and begin to thank God this morning. Say, God announced me. Let it be a prayer this morning. God announced me. God announced me this morning. Lord announced me, Lord. Lord announced me this morning. Father God. <laughs> My guys, that woman that will announce me, my can't get the boss in the man to a bubble skin that I told you to a gada, my tari get the boss in the laga, my daughter was in the lagada. Father, we thank you, thank you this morning, oh God. Blessed be your never God, Father, announce us, God. Father, your children are gathered, oh God. Father, they have been filled, ready to bust out to God. Father, oh, announce us, oh God. Lord God. In Jesus' name, we announce us, Oh, 
announce your name. We surrender ourselves to you. Announce us, Lord. Announce us, Lord. In the name of God. Father, for announcing that the global harvest prayer network of Father God into the world, into the nations. Announce Pastor Light. Announce, oh Father God, each and every woman of God, each and every man of God of this past and God. The communities where they are. In the name of Jesus, Father, announce, 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 announce us, O Lord God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, announce, O Father God, announce us, O Lord God. Marianda Badara Raboro Bosi Kataka Badara God in North America and South America. Announce us, oh Father God, yes, in Australia and Oceania. Yes, announce, oh Father God, in the pastor light, oh Jehovah God. Yes, in the nations, oh Father God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, in the cities, oh Father God, in the communities, oh Jehovah God. Yes, Father, this anointing, Father, that we carry. Yes, these mantles that we carry, oh Father God. Father, for they are not for our own consumption, oh Father God. Father, the men Amen. 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 Father, we give you praise. We give you glory and honor. Thank you for choosing us as your instruments. Thank you for choosing us as your vessels. Thank you, Lord, for drawing us closer to you. We are so thankful and we consider it. We, are, we consider ourselves most privileged to be part of your family, to be one with you, to be united with you. Thank you, Father, for your plans to announce us to the nations of the world, to announce us, announce the gift, announce your grace upon our life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, I want to thank God for every one of you. Um, thank you so much, Sister Nne. Thank you, Mama T, for starting the meeting. Um, this is one of such special mornings. I desire and I long that everyone that bear that name Jesus should be in this meeting. I long for it in my heart. And I believe there is something coming your way that is very special for this season. There is something very special God wants to bring to you this season. Um, bro Brother Z, who is managing the platform? Uh, is everything okay? Yes, Hello? we're fine. Okay. All right. Thank you. Because I'm not seeing myself here, so I don't know what's going on. My video is on, but I'm not seeing myself on this screen. We can see you. Okay. Just spotlight him. All right. Now, by the grace of God, we are concluding our focus on what we need to do to keep ourselves on track and keep ourselves on fire as kings and priests ordained for this generation, as kings and priests raised for this generation, what do we do? And as I stood up early hours of this morning, seeking his face and dwelling in his presence, I heard the Lord saying something that caught my attention. He said, tell my sons and my daughters to eat the book and be alive. Say, eat the book and live. 
or neglect the book and perish. Eat the book and live. Eat the book and be on fire. Eat the book and remain focused or neglect it and perish. Neglect it and be lost. There are many called who are lost. There are many chosen ones who are lost. Anointed but lost. <laughs> he says, eat the book and live. Eat the book and live. <laughs> Neglect the book and perish. And as I began to reflect on this, the Lord began to digest that message the more. He said to me, do you want to overcome sinful habits? Do you want to overcome sinful habits and ungodly lifestyle? Then eat this book. There is a book God has prepared for you as a person to guard you and to guide you so that you don't lose your direction. You don't lose your bearing in life. Hey, you pick up this, huh? There is a book God has prepared for each one of us and for you to live in this present world and keep focus and be on fire, you need to eat that book. For you to be a voice for God in this generation, you need to eat this book. To be a voice, a voice for God in this generation, you necessarily need to eat this book. All right? He said, number three, for you to be one of his end-time ambassadors, God is looking for end-time ambassadors, end-time ambassadors of the kingdom of God. All right, for you to be a representation and a representative of God satisfactorily, he said, you need to eat this book. There is a book the Lord said to me, he says, if you long to be one of the end time saviors that are rising, there are saviors that God is raising all over the nations. You see them rising in every nation. You see them rising in every continent, in every industry. God is raising saviors. God is raising deliverers. He said for you to be part of that army of saviors, army of deliverers, you need to eat this book. You need to eat this book. Say, eat the book and live, or neglect the book and be lost. He said to me also that for you to control kingdom wealth in this generation, for you to control kingdom wealth and still be godly, to control wealth and still remain godly, you need to eat this book. You need to eat this book until you are eating, you are overtaken by the force and the power behind this book. He said, number six, to fulfill your life purpose on earth, to fulfill your life purpose on earth, you need to eat this book because there are many things that are contending against your life purpose. There are many things that are contending against you fulfilling your life mission, your life mandate. For you to fulfill it, you need to eat this book I want to talk about. He said for you to be a burning and a shining light, a burning and a shining light. The Bible talked about John the Baptist as a shine, a burning and a shining light for his generation. For you in this generation, this generation where the love of many is waxing cold, the love of many, the faith people have in God is getting weaker and weaker by reason of the activities of the end time. All right, for your love and for your faith to be waxing stronger and stronger, you need to eat this book and be completely, you know, overtaken by the voice of this book. It says, 
for you to be a history maker for the kingdom of God, for you to be a terror in the kingdom of darkness, a terror, a terror to the kingdom of darkness, you need to eat this book. You need to eat this book. So as he called my attention to this, the scripture that came to me first was the book of Revelation chapter 10 from verse one, Revelation chapter 10 from verse one, and it says, and I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, all right? Clothed with a cloud and a, 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 a rainbow was upon his head and his face was as it were the sun and his feet as pillars of fire. Now, this is very interesting. I saw here that there is this angel, there is this angel, special angel that was sent. And this angel, according to the scripture, the scripture said that he, 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 he wore the cloud. His garment was a, the cloud. He was decorated in the cloud. Okay. And his, 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 his hair was the, the, you know, what do you call it? Like women beautify their hair, some use, you know, uh, Brazilian hair, Indian hair, American hair, but this very angel, the hair was the rainbow. He had the rainbow on his head, his face was like the sun, and his feet were like pillars of fire. But the scripture says that this angel had in his hand a little book, a little book was open, and he sat on his feet upon the, he sat, sorry, and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the, on the, on, on the earth. Now, because of time, I'm going to run to verse number, from verse number six. Okay, from verse eight, let me run to eight. He said, and the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, go, go and take the little book. Go, take the little book, which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. The voice said to him, go and collect this book. Go and collect this book. A little book that was being carried by this giant angel. The angel is so big. One leg stood on the earth. The other leg stood on the waters. Occupy the whole earth. One angel. And the scripture described his face to be shining like the sun. He was clothed with a cloud. He wore the cloud of glory. His, his garment was the cloud of glory. His face was like the sun, all right? And his legs were like pillars of fire, beams of fire. And his, as big as this angel is, he was holding a small book, a small book. Now, the angel, the, the one that was speaking, said to him, go take this book, take this book from the hand of this angel. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, give me the little book. And he said unto me, take it, take it and eat it. And it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be sweet. It shall be sweet. It shall be sweet, okay, in your mouth like the honey. So he gave him the book, the little book, which carries something. What this book carried, the angel said to him, as you eat of this book, as you take of this book, as you eat of it, it will be sweet to your mouth, but in your stomach, it will be bitter. All right, now the next verse said, and I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, I ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey, and as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. My belly was bitter. Number 11, he said, and he said unto me, thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Thou must prophesy again before many, many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Now, I, I believe God is saying something to us here this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. 
please, can you forget the, the screen, the script or something, please? Is the, the system is distracting me this morning. I don't know what's going on here. All right, let me try to concentrate. Just leave the scriptures side. I will, I will read from here. He said, and he said unto me, thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. I want us to understand that there is, there is, is an era the church has stepped into. There is a, a, a phase or a season in God's global agenda and this phase is looking for men and women who will prophesy the word of God, who will bring the gospel, the end time gospel, the end time message of redemption, the end time message of redemption, men and women that have been, that are, that, that are prepared for this. These men, like we've said earlier, they are men that will understand their role as priests and kings for the kingdom in this end time. These are men that have understood what it means to receive the grace of God and to walk in righteousness. These are men that have understood what it means to have a repentant life, to have a repentant heart, a repentant heart. Some believers are not repentant in their ways. Some believers, even ministers, some are not repentant in their ways. God is searching for men and women that are repentant, ready to repent at anything that offend God, ready to come to an end in any part that is offensive to the heart of God. But the Lord is saying that besides all the things we've discussed in the course of this week, these men are men that must seek to find this small book, eat this book, eat this book, eat it enough so it will become a message that will flow out of their belly from the depth of their belly it will flow to the nations god is looking for end time ministers end time prophets end time apostles end time evangelists end time intercessors end time heralds of the gospel end time ambassadors announcers announcers of the coming of the lord Men and women who will prepare the nations for the Lord's return. Men and women who will prepare the Lord's return, prepare the nations for the return of the Lord. I have said it here again and again. The Lord said to me a while ago, he said, arise my son and prepare communities for eternity. Prepare the cities for eternity. Prepare the nations for eternity. How do you prepare cities, communities, islands, nations for eternity? How do you go about that? It is, it is by discipling people, discipling people, equipping people, equipping people. One day, one day, one person is equipped, is discipled, and that one person disciples another and another disciples another. Before you know it, the community, the city, the nation, the whole world is overtaken by disciples of Jesus because a woman chose to disciple those close to her. A man decided and humbled himself, paid the price of discipling a few people who too will disciple others and others will disciple others. And through that discipleship, through that discipleship cruise, through commitment to learning the ways of Christ, we will overtake the world. Not just about crusade, there are crusades that are heavily sponsored, heavily sponsored. But at the end of the day, you may find that there is nothing to show as the fruit of such a heavy crusade. Should we do crusade? Yes, but crusade should be done in different way and shape as it will make sense to the people you are reaching out to. Crusades these days can be done in complete different pattern from what we used to know in order to reach out a specific group of people, strategic group of people, to reach out to them at all costs, to help them to embrace the gospel and beyond the crusade, find a way to sit down with the people, to educate them in the ways of God, to cultivate the life of Christ, to inject the life of Christ. St. Paul said, my little children whom I travel in bed, you know, travel, you know, for in prayer until Christ be born. 
be born again in them, be inculcated into them, be shaped into their life. Now, I want you to please take note of this. There is a little book God wants you to return back to. And that book is the book of life. That book is the Bible. That book is the book of the prophecy of your life. There is a book written over your life. I repeat, there is a book written over your life. There is a book written over your life. That book is found in the Bible. The Bible contains the story of the life of every one of us. The Bible contains the story of the life of every one of us. Put it differently, it contains the description, the narrative of your life mission on earth. You need to locate it. When some people read the Bible, there is something they see. Somebody may open the Bible. All he sees is evangelism. Another reads the Bible. All he sees is how to disciple people. Another, what he's seeing is leadership. You know, my, my, what's his name? John Maxwell. If you ask John Maxwell to preach on repentance, he will end up preaching about leadership. You ask him to preach about financial breakthrough, you will see John Maxwell preaching about leadership. Every man, every woman is called for a message, is called for a, an assignment, is called for a particular voice. There is a voice inside of you, but that voice will come out after you have eaten the book written for you, that is a book written for you. That is a, there are many messages in the Bible. There are messages that are created for you to come on fire. You need to study to show yourself approved, a workman, a laborer, a vessel of God that is prepared for the hour. Now, I want to say this to you. In the book of, he says, remember, he says to him in that verse, Verse, verse 11, he said, and he said unto me, thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. This morning, we are going to pray that God will help each one of us, that God will enable us, that God will enable us to find this book and eat this book until this book overtakes our life. So we might become that prophetic voice God wants us to be if our generation. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3 from verse 1, Ezekiel chapter 3 from verse 1, I saw almost a repeat of what God downloaded to John. He says, as God said, mortal man, Ezekiel chapter 3 from verse 1. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The King, King James translation of it. Thank you, Father. He says, then he said unto me, Thank you, Jesus. Sorry, just a minute. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, eat what you find. Eat this scroll, eat this scroll, and go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat the scroll. He, he caused me to eat that scroll. And he said unto me, son of man, feed your belly. Feed your belly and fill your stomach. Eat this scroll. Eat this scroll until you feed your belly. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Brother Monday, can you put off your video, please? Brother Monday, switch off your video. Pastor Monday, please switch off your video. Thank you. And he said to me, son of man, Feed your belly and fill your stomach with this scroll that I give you, with this scroll that I give you. So I ate and it was in my stomach like honey, like honey is in, in sweetness. Then he said unto me, son of man, go to the house of Israel and speak with my words to them. Speak with my words to them. Now, it's still the same thing. Now, I want you to look at verse three again. Verse three, the good news translation says, he said, mortal man, eat this scroll and that I give you. Fill your stomach with it. I ate it and it tasted like, you know, sweet as honey. All right, putting these scriptures together, I just want to communicate something here to us. The Lord is saying to us today, Take the book and eat it and live. 
and be on fire for me. The book in question is the book of life, the Bible. Go and eat this book. Eat this book. Not there's a difference between reading the Bible and eating the Bible. There's the difference between just doing a study. It's different from eating it. He said, eat it until your stomach is filled. Eat this book, this little book. Eat it until your stomach is filled, filled to overflowing. Your belly must be full. Jesus spoke to them. He says, on the last day of the feast, he stood and cried, say, whoever will, whoever is willing, whoever is desirous, let him come and drink. For out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This is spoke concerning the Holy Spirit. Now, God wants us to be full of his word, full of his words. He said, the word I've spoken unto you is spirit and life. Being full of the Holy Spirit implies being full of the word of God, both the one that is written and the one that is revealed and the one that has to do with the fullness of the Holy Spirit being bestowed upon you. By all means, in this end time, God is speak, crying out. Jesus cried out on that last day of the feast. I see God crying out of heaven that his sons and daughters should take the book of life and eat it. There are so much deception in today's world. There are so much deception, so much lukewarmness, so much hypocrisy, so much compromise. Why? The reason why people, and they don't even know which one is right and which one is wrong, who to listen to and who not to listen to, what to do and what not to do. The reason for the confusion is that many have abandoned the book. Many have abandoned the book. The book we are talking about is not mathematics. We are not talking about geography. We are talking about the book of life, the book of life, the book that is written for you to live. He said, eat the book and live, or neglect it and perish, neglect it and be lost. Many mighty have fallen because they neglected the book. Many mighty, gifted, anointed, empowered people have lost it all because they neglected the book. So first, the message is to you, servant of God, the Lord is talking to you. Go back to the book. Go back to studying, reading, meditating, eat it. It's more than reading. It's more than reading. It is beyond reading. Read it. Meditate on it. Eat it. Sleep with it. Wake up with it. Talk about it. Run with it. Make it your conversation. Chat with it. Chat through it. Chat from it. Let your conversation be word-based. Let your conversation, let your teaching, your preaching be rooted in the word of God. Let whatever you preach as an evangelist, as a pastor, as a singer, whatever you do, let it be rooted in the word. Let it be soaked in the word. Dwell in the word so that you don't, like Paul was, was saying, may God forbid that I, after preaching to others, I lose out. At the, day, at the end of the day. So soak yourself in the word of God. He said to me, if you want to make heaven, if you want to make heaven, soak yourself in the word. If you want to make heaven at last, then eat the book. If you want to be decorated with crowns, crowns, after you leave this earth, soak yourself by eating the book, eat the book. I think I have sp spoken that clear enough. Please, if you didn't get anything this week, remember, God says he wants you to be on track with your calling. He wants you to be on fire in the area of your calling. And the secret way is to go back and eat that small book. He ate it and it filled his stomach. And because his stomach was full, it began to flow. He began to prophesy to the nations and to kings and tribes and people everywhere because he was loaded. God want to load your stomach with the book, with the word, with the fire, so you can open your mouth and it will flow. The world is dry, looking for fresh water. The world is cold, looking for warmth, for fire of heat. The world is lost looking for guide, you know, people who will guide them, shepherds that will guide them. And if you will eat this book enough, 
you will serve God better. Shall we begin to pray? First prayer, I want us to begin to give thanks to the Lord and say, Lord, I thank you for appearing to me and for instructing me and for commanding me and for rebuking me, for correcting me, for inspiring me, for motivating me to go back to eat the book, to eat that book of life, to meditate on your word and to give myself over completely, unreservedly to that instruction of wisdom, to the word of God that made the heaven and the earth. Neglect that word to my own destruction. Embrace that word to my own empowerment. Powering. Shall we begin to pray? Father, in the name that is above all name, Lord, I call upon you this hour. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I call upon you this hour. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I call upon you this hour. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I call upon you this hour. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I call upon you this hour. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I call upon you this hour. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I call upon you this hour. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I call upon you this hour. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I call upon you this hour. Thank you, Father God. 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 Thank you,
You prayed, God, bless me with this job. Bless me with prosperity. Give me a business. Give me children. I will serve you to heaven. God, just help me to get married. When I get married and I get children and I get a job, I graduate and I will serve you. You, God gives you all of that and the enemy has succeeded in taking the Bible away from you. I want you to pray, Lord, help me to discipline myself and to take back that book and to eat it, to discover that book, to find that book again and to eat that book until I become the embodiment of that book, a representation of that book. Shall we go ahead and pray? My Father, in the name of Jesus, it is our prayer this morning, oh God. Le bando setra, le brando soto, Luke chapter 3, verse 2. Now he says, and, and uh, Annas and Caiaphas were high priests. At that time, the word of God came to John, son of Zachariah, in the desert. The word of the Lord came to him in the desert. I want us to pray for the nations. And our prayer here is, Lord, let your word is Luke chapter 3, verse 2, not chapter 2. Ma. Thank you. Now, I want us to pray. Lord, let your word appear. Let this small book, let this book appear to your servants across the nations. I'm telling you, the enemy has removed the Bible, the small book, the, the book that contains the passion, the book that can, when you eat it, you cannot but be filled with the fullness of God. When you eat it, you cannot but be filled with the passion of God, with the vision of God. Many people have left the book. They are preaching culture. They are preaching tradition. They are preaching, you know, politics. They are preaching, you know, uh, wealth creation. They are preaching, you know, the news, the news that is going on in the society. Lord, let the book return back. Give us back that book. Let the book come back to the church. Let the book come back to the church and let your servant eat the book afresh. You know, there was a time the, the, the enemy fought this book to the point that the, 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 the Roman Catholic you know, institution in those days banned the book. You dare not see anybody hold the Bible. You only hold the Bible to your own demise. You'll be killed. You'll be killed. You'll be sentenced to death. To be found holding the Bible, reading the Bible, that is death sentence. That was how much the devil fought the book in those days. But thank God for people that fought until the book was brought back. Martin Luther and their groups and their, their kind fought so hard until the embargo placed on the book was taken away that 
to you and I can have access to the Bible today. And thank God for the king that also translated that book into English. From English, almost every language in the world today have the Bible written in their own language. But with the multiplication of the translations of the Bible, the book is still taken away. That is the mystery. People have all versions of the Bible, but they don't open it. They don't open it. And because they don't open it, they have become ignorant of the will of God, the standard of God, the principles of God, the ways of God. Rather, they are learning from the world and no longer from the world. I want us to pray, therefore, Lord, let the book return back to the pastors, back to the evangelists, back to the believers, back to the disciples of Jesus Christ. Lord, let this book, he said, and the word came to John in the wilderness. Let the book, the word of the Lord, appear to God's servant all over the world. Shall we begin to pray? In the name of Jesus, Father, 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 Amen. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15, it says, and I will give you shepherds according to my heart, and I will give you shepherds according to my heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Lord, give Africa shepherds according to your heart who will feed the flock in Africa, the flock in Europe and the UK, Shepherds who will feed the flock in Australia and Oceania, who will feed the flock in North America, in South America, the flock, the shepherd that will feed the flock in all of Asia with knowledge and with understanding, not with just political history, no, not with their own local, you know, cultural ideology. People that will teach the people of God, feed the people of God with the, 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 the right meat, the right meat, the word, unadulterated word that is able to save their soul and keep them healthy and keep them sound and balanced in their journey to eternity. That they will be so fed that they can pass through, they can pass through the earth without being known. Without, be, without making a mark, a mark on the wall of history. Lord, raise such men across every nation, across every city, across every island. Men and women that are chosen and ordained and anointed by God with the tongue of the learned, with the tongue of a ready writer that will equip the saints all over the place. Please shall we pray. God, make me one of these people. Make me one of these people and let there be multiplication of those people across the globe. Shall we pray that prayer in the name of Jesus? My God, I call upon you this hour. Lenando Sopato Kobono Father, Father, we call upon you, Lord. Give us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord. 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 Help us, Lord.
and we pray. Amen. I want to pray with us because of time, but please, I want you to remember God is crying out, my sons and my daughters return back to the book return back to the book eat the book he didn't just say read the book eat it and eat it until your stomach is full i want to see men across africa across asia across europe i want to see men across all of the uk i want to see men and women across all of oceania and australia out of all over north america and south america out in every city in every rural place men and women that have found the book and they have found the book where they hid it where they kept it they only take it on sunday all right men that have pulled the book out to eat it to study it, to reflect on it, to sleep with it, to work with it, to talk about it, to, to dream it, to chew it until it becomes their language, it becomes their habit, it becomes their lifestyle. The book has become their message. When they are in business, they are speaking the book. They are in church, it's the same language. In the, in the house, in the vehicle, in the airplane, that is their conversation, that is their message, that is revival. That's how revival will be. That's how you'll be on fire. Please return back to the book, mama. Return back to the book, sir, and give attention to it. For inside of that book lies your life, lies your life. They said, go back to the book, return to the book and leave and neglect the book and be lost. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray you this hour that you will cause us to return back to this book, to return back to the book, and let there be an army of men and women that are woken up, woken up, eat the book until our stomach is full, until our stomach is full, until our heart is saturated, until our soul is fed and transformed and equipped and empowered as instruments of releasing the sound of the end time message, the sound of the end time message, prophesying to the nations, prophesying to kings, prophesying to all people because our inside is saturated with the book. Lord, help us and glorify your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, I'm going to stop here because of time. Can I call Pastor Susan to bless the communion for us? Go ahead, ma. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Um, John the Baptist says in Luke, in Luke 3, 21, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, you are my beloved son in you I am well pleased. When you partake of the body and blood of Jesus Christ, we inherit uh, the blessings of God that he gave to Jesus Christ. And therefore, as we are being reminded today that we need to eat the book, the book that we actually 
it represents Jesus Christ, who is the life, hallelujah, which is our life, who is our strength, who is the, the redemptive lamp that died for us on the cross of Calvary. Nothing will give us the strength, the wisdom, the spirit, all the, 11, all the seven spirits according to Isaiah 11, except the body of Christ, except the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're going to take the body and the blood of Jesus Christ with that understanding that, Father, like our sister was saying before, that many people have got gifts, but they have not been announced. And therefore, we decree and declare that as we eat the book in the form of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ, we shall be announced with all the impartation, with the double grace for global impact. God will do miracles through us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Heavenly Father, King of glory, we sanctify these condiments. They represent your body, which is life. Mm. And the book, which is your word. And therefore, as we partake of this body and this blood of Jesus Christ, we decree and declare that we are cleansed from every iniquity, from every sin of procrastination, of laziness. We receive all the seven spirits in the name of Jesus Christ. And Amen. we receive the power in the word of God, in that book. We receive the strength. We receive the resilience that Jesus Christ had that will accomplish the will of God, regardless of what is happening around us in the name of Jesus Christ. We are empowered through this body and blood of Jesus Christ. Let us partake. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Thank you. Over to you, Pastor Light. Thank you, Pastor Susan. And the Lord bless you, ma. Servants of God, we are going to drop the curtain at this point. And please remember, God wants to announce you, but it's not you like you. It is the book when you eat it and it dissects all aspects of your life and digests and penetrates and assimilates into every aspect of you, that that book will begin to announce itself from you. John said, I must decrease and he must increase. For you to be announced, the Christ in you to be announced, this book have to conquer you because the unconquered you cannot be announced in this end time. God is pulling many down in order to raise some up. Many who have been lifted and they left the book, God is taking them back to the background and bringing the nobodies like you who is learning to go back to the book. God will bring you to announce you. So please keep pushing, keep pressing, keep waiting, keep enduring. Keep overcoming. He that overcomes shall be given the manna which you will eat and you will die no more. God bless you and cause his glorious face to shine upon you and cause Amen. your name to be announced and cause you to stand out among others. May the Lord cause your hand to be strong. Your hand shall not be weak. Your hand shall not be feeble. In this weekend, Amen. We will be a voice for God. In this week, we shall be known that God has found you as a vessel to represent him in this generation. In this weekend, may God rejoice because of you. May God rejoice. May heaven rejoice because of you. May you be an instrument that will bring joy to heaven and cause hell to well because you have devoted your all to God. So shall it be that no evil plan against you shall prosper. No weapon against you shall prosper. Weapon of sickness, 
in form of disease, infirmity, lack, shame, loss. Those weapons shall not come near you. The Lord has surrounded you with his glory, has beautified you with his glory, and so shall you never be ashamed anymore. But the glory of the Lord shall be your voice in the name of Jesus. Lord, I declare double grace upon your sons and daughters. Double Amen. grace, double grace, double grace, double grace for great exploit, double grace for great impact, double grace for great impact this week, this weekend, this weekend, double grace for great assignment to the glory of your name. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the time of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest in us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.